Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. I had been doing a series on various aspects of using analog ammeters in our designs. In one of the comments, a viewer asked about meter protection circuits. I'm going to be addressing this very issue here in this video. At the expense of potentially getting off into the weeds with details, as an inquisitive experimenter, you want to know the why behind what will work and how. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. I make a concerted effort to respond to every comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So, how do we protect our precious analog ammeter from damage? The end object of a meter protection circuit is to prevent the meter movement itself from getting fried with too much current passing through it. Somehow, we have to take this excess current and shunt it around the meter movement itself. There are all kinds of fancy dynamic ways we could accomplish this task. The aim of this video is to talk about the simplest, most straightforward method of doing this. In the past, one of the traditional methods of meter protection consisted of a pair of diodes in parallel, each facing the opposite direction placed directly across the meter movement itself. Now, there are two aspects of these diodes that affect the effectiveness of this approach. The first is their forward voltage, and the second is the reverse leakage current. Let's briefly look at each of these and then assess the effects of them. I think the diode forward voltage is probably the biggest thing that affects the effectiveness of this sort of meter protection circuit. The diodes that were used in the past were standard silicon rectifier diodes. Now my circuit analysis class in college, we were taught to assume a forward voltage of around 0.6 volts for a diode. This means that the ideal diode will conduct no current until the forward voltage across it reaches 0.6 volts. After this point, it acts like a dead short, ideally. Let's consider the example of the 10 volt full scale voltmeter I created in my video on creating a voltmeter from your ammeter. I put the link for it up here in this corner, right up here. The meter movement had a full scale current of 101.14 microamps and an internal resistance of 772 ohms. At full scale, the meter had 78.08 millivolts across it. Now if we consider just the base idea of 0.6 volts across these ideal diodes, this would mean that the current through the meter would be 0.6 volts divided by the internal resistance of the meter, 772 ohms. It gives us 777 microamps of current. This is 7.7 times the full scale current of the meter with an ideal perfect diode. What is the input voltage to our meter to produce this? 77 volts on a 10 volt scale. Of course, there's no such thing as an ideal diode, so we have to talk about real-world diodes. The first aspect of real-world diodes forward voltage is that it increases with the current through them and it changes with temperature. Now here's a model of a real-world diode to help us visualize why that might be. We have a series resistance here, a lower value resistor, and we have a high value resistor across our ideal diode. You can see the series resistance associated with the model, which is the main cause of the increasing forward voltage of the diode as current increases. Resistors change value with temperature, so also our low resistance will change value with temperature, and the resulting forward voltage will change with it. So what does this mean to our meter protection circuit? 
it means that the worst event causing the need for protection, the more we push the ability of the meter movement to survive. Now there's one other aspect of the real world diode forward voltage and the associated forward current that affects this application. Diodes don't just hit the magic 0.6 volts and instantly turn on, providing a nice linear conduction curve. As you approach the magic 0.6 volts, they begin to conduct more and more while not really being totally turned on. Even when they hit that magic 0.6 volts, they still have a way to go before truly being totally forward biased and conducting. They have what I call a soft turn on. You can see this in the curves of the ideal diode versus the real diode here. The blue curve is a real 1N4004 silicon diode as measured on my curve tracer. The orange curve is what an ideal diode would look like under the same conditions. You can see that the current starts to flow well below the 0.6 volts. And you can also see that as current increases, so does the forward voltage of the diode. This characteristic makes it a bit more difficult to design a meter protection circuit that activates early and at the same time doesn't affect the accuracy and linearity of the meter design. There is another aspect of real world diode characteristics that can affect our meter protection circuit. It is leakage current and I will address this next. Another aspect of these diodes is what is called leakage current associated with them. We tend to think that diodes pass zero current until we reach that magic turn on voltage of 0.6 volts and zero current in the reverse direction. Well, not quite. Real world diodes always have current flowing through them in both directions. The higher the voltage across them, the more the current flows. So why is this idea of leakage current important in this application? This is because the current that should be flowing through the meter movement itself is being shunted around the meter movement by the protection diodes. The more the leakage current of the diodes, the lower the meter's needle will deflect. The actual leakage current depends on two things temperature and the voltage across the diode. Generally speaking, leakage current increases with increased temperature and increases with increased voltage. Now to some extent this can be accommodated in the design of the meter, but it can affect the linearity of the meter. In other words, you could set it up to read exactly full scale and then see that at half scale it will read a bit high. So in selecting diodes for this application you want to be careful that the leakage current of the diode does not have a significant effect on the linearity of the meter throughout the operating temperature range for your application. Generally speaking however, leakage currents may be relatively low. I only mention it here because I thought you would be best served by being aware of the issue in case it rears its ugly head in your design. Now we can do some bench experiments to see how all of this plays out in a simple protection circuit. So here we have the traditional simple meter protection circuit. We have the input, the positive input through the multiplier resistor to the meter movement. We're showing the internal resistance of the meter movement and the meter protection circuit is a pair of side-by-side -side parallel diodes facing opposite directions. Let's see how this performs in protecting our meter using a bench experiment. Here's my bench setup. I am using the same multiplier resistor that I used in my voltmeter video. I added two 1N4004 diodes in parallel across the decade box. The decade box is replacing my analog ammeter movement with the 
resistance value set to the internal resistance of the meter movement. The procedure is to measure the applied voltage, which I will do with my Fluke 175, and the voltage across the meter movement, or the decade box, using my Tenma. I will increase the applied voltage from 0 to 60 volts in approximately 1 volt increments. From these measurements, I can calculate two things. I can calculate the current through the decade box, in other words, the meter movement, and I can calculate what the current would be if we didn't have the diodes. The object is to see what our diodes are doing for us so let's take a look at the results of the experiment. And here are the results. The orange line is what we expect if we have no protection at all. The blue line is the actual bench measurement with traditional protection in place. You can see that the protection doesn't even begin to give us any benefit until we reach over 40 volts. With 60 volts on our input, we are pushing 560 microamps through a 100 microamp meter movement. The performance in the negative direction is going to be no different because the means of protection hasn't changed. This makes me think that there has to be a more effective method to protect my 10 volt meter without going crazy with electronic wizardry. And so I arrived at this design for my 10 volt meter using LT Spice. The object was to make it so the effects of the diodes kick in earlier without affecting the overall accuracy and linearity of the meter itself. The idea was to increase the forward voltage across the diodes so that they can begin to conduct earlier. Furthermore, I wanted the reverse polarity to diode to conduct a lot earlier because I don't want my meter pegged backwards so much. This simple design simply adds resistors to the multiplier string and attaches the protection diodes to these new nodes. And so the overall multiplier resistor value is the sum of these three, Rmolt1, Rmolt2, Rmolt3. And then we have 3 is a 1k ohm resistor with this forward biased diode. Then we have a 2K ohm resistor with the reverse bias diode, and then the remaining amount of the multiplier resistor up here at the top. So let's go to the bench and see how this performs. I have exactly the same test set up as before, except here I have my cobbled together meter protection circuit. As before, I'm going to be measuring the applied voltage with my Fluke DVM and the voltage across my decade resistor, aka the meter movement, with my Tenma DVM. And because this new design sports a different protection mechanism for reverse polarity, I will start at minus 60 volts and move toward plus 60 volts in approximately one volt increments. Now, let's go see the results of this experiment. The best way to appreciate the results is to compare them with what things would be like if we had no protection at all and with the traditional protection. This is what you see here in this graph. The red line is what we would expect if we had no protection at all. The purple line is what we would have with the traditional protection. The blue line is the results of my new and improved version. You can see that the protection kicks in much sooner and does a better job of limiting the current through the meter movement. However, a very important aspect of this is how the new protection topology affects the linearity and accuracy of the meter in the range of interest. This was designed to have a full-scale reading of 10 volts, so we are interested in the region between 0 and 10 volts. The blue line is the actual performance of the meter with the new protection installed. 
The orange line is what we would expect if the meter were unaffected by the meter protection circuit. As you can see here, there is no discernible difference between the two. Thus, we not only have the improved meter protection, we also have not impacted the accuracy or linearity of the meter with that protection. Well, now you can think about how you are going to create your own meter protection circuit. Take the principles and understanding from this video and apply them to your own circuit. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.